second section of organic contaminants in the subsurface environment. Today we're going to start talking about processes that affect the dissolved contaminant plume. But we're going to do this in a slightly different way. We're going to talk, talk about it as a remedial technology. The technology is termed monitored natural attenuation. So first, what is monitored natural attenuation? Well, there are a number of definitions. Each jurisdiction has a different definition. Let's have a look at a couple of definitions. Um, both of them are taken out of the websites, but they have a lot of commonality. Uh, the first one emphasizes monitoring and talks about natural processes and talks about reducing the contaminant level. The second one also talks about monitoring and processes and it talks about degradation or losing some of the contaminant mass. Uh, and it emphasizes verification. So these are factors we have to build in. And they all start with a good understanding and a good demonstration of that understanding uh, for the processes. So how would you go about demonstrating that monitored natural attenuation is a good remediation? So we have a dissolved plume heading towards a receptor. What's our approach in trying to decide whether this technology should be considered? First thing is we have to decide that the dissolved plume currently is not causing any contamination. If it has already reached the well, it's too late. That requires us to consider whether or not we know the receptor, we know the concentrations that are protective of that receptor. So that has to be defined at a very early stage. What other processes would help us or, or factors would help us? We have to decide that the dissolved plume is really not growing or becoming more risky over time. Perhaps that's a very conservative approach because we may be able to show that while the plume is actually growing a bit, uh, it's likely to stop in time. So that's an area where I think we'll have to demonstrate very good understanding of the processes. The third issue then is understanding the mechanisms that are bringing about the attenuation. That's the processes. That's what we really want to emphasize in the next few lectures. A number of processes, uh, many of which you've seen already in section one of the course and others that you'll see in the following lectures are helpful in terms of attenuating contaminants. And they're here listed for you. And we'll be returning to these as we go through the course further. So uh, we'll start by looking at the natural attenuation processes and we'll try and give you some examples and uh, show you um, our mistakes and allow you to learn from our, our errors. For hydrogeologists, we can consider these processes as only really four categories. The first is infection. It's simply the water moving along picking up the contaminants from the residuals that you talked about in section one uh, and transporting them towards some potential receptor. That's fairly direct and very well understood uh, by hydrogeologists. Second process is perhaps not as well understood. It's a process of dispersion. Dispersion is a process that can bring about dilution, but as you see from the drawing, the front of the plume in fact, is advancing faster than if there was no dispersion. But the whole front of the plume is actually uh, fairly dilute. So dispersion has this dilution effect, but it can also advance the contaminant migration. The third process is retardation. And that's a process whereby the contaminant interacts with the aquifer solids. It resides on the aquifer solids for some period of time and then it comes back into solution, is transported along. Um, it's a process that slows down the contaminant and it generally is viewed as a good process. The last process that we'll talk about is reaction and that's very complex uh, and we'll touch upon it and give you some examples, but we warn you that it's really site specific and uh, will require perhaps some expertise that, that we don't have at the moment. The types of processes we're thinking about are chemical reactions like hydrolysis or biological processes that degrade the contaminants. So those are the four processes that we'll deal with and we'll try and go through them in that order in the next few lectures. So in this lecture we've introduced 
monitor natural attenuation, and we're setting the stage now for you to start looking at the processes that we'll use in evaluating and demonstrating monitoring natural attenuation. Thank you.